How do you think I'm doing? The chestnut asked, while he ate at a campfire along with Penemu and Tiamat. Acceptable. It was Penemu's simple response, to later eat a small piece of meat. I've improved a bit, she thought with a small smile, savoring the taste of dinner. What's going on? Tiamat asked, tilting her head slightly to the side at the brunette's expression. It's nothing, he commented, making a small face as he looked at his food. Does the little profit you're making bother you? Penemu asked, making Issei shake his head. You already warned me that I was almost at the limit of the power I could obtain. She answered, rubbing her hair. What really bothers me, is that I still haven't been able to activate my ability again since the battle against Valley, and it's already been several days. Do not be impatient, she replied the cadre, making the dragon and the brunette look at him. Controlling your ultimate ability is secondary. You must first learn the techniques with the katana, since you barely know how to wield it properly. She declared herself, to then look at the chestnut out of the corner of her eye. Besides, I've already studied everything surrounding that sacred gear, even since before we met. Whenever I want, we can start a special training, which, by the way, would only last for one day. She finished, closing her eyes in satisfaction as she took another bite of her food. That seems very simple, the brunette commented with slight surprise. In a single day of training, it's not easy. Penemu clarified quickly, I only know what you need to achieve it, and the means I must implement to obtain it, he concluded, casting a quick glance at Tiamat. I see, the brunette commented, giving the food a small taste, being slightly surprised by the taste achieved. Something that did not go unnoticed by Penemu, and that tiny smile on his face was proof of it. Changing the subject, I'd like to know more about the scale you mentioned earlier. Uh, were you still thinking about that? Penemu asked, then raised an eyebrow. What exactly do you want to know? Issei couldn't help but seriously look at her after thinking about it. I'd like to know where I stand, he commented, frowning slightly. You know what I mean. Penemu simply looked at him, then set her empty tray aside. I understand your curiosity, she declared seriously. I just hope you don't feel overwhelmed afterward, she added with a small smirk, causing Issei to quickly shake his head from her. You already know that with explosion, and after this training, you would manage to be at number 8 or 7, similar to the power of Sirzex, Gabriel, and the entities that are great pillars in their races. She cleared herself, then placed a hand on her chest, pointing to herself. My full power would be rated at level 18. She clarified herself, causing Issei's eyes to widen slightly. There was much more difference between him and her than he thought. I am one of the ten strongest entities currently. The tenth, to be exact. She concluded, making Issei's eyes widen a bit more. The entities that are above me, are the few gods that survived the catastrophe that happened a thousand years ago, having a level that varies between twenty-two and thirty. Penemu, he waved his hand slightly, indicating that he did not want to go into details. In fifth place, is Valley. This clarification made Issei pay special attention. I know him well and I know for sure the potential he has, as well as the nascent power of his sacred gear. Penemu put a hand to his chin, thinking hard. I have never seen the full power it contains. But considering what he demonstrated. 200, Issei exclaimed, eyes wide. There is a huge difference between the top five positions. Penemu clarified, for example, Tannin is twice as strong as Valley. The woman clarified, although this did not take the brunette by surprise, since it was something she imagined, being a dragon king. Is there even such a vast difference between Tiamat and Tannen? She asked herself, causing the dragon to look up at her with a small, fearless smile. I told you before that there is a big difference between the dragon kings, even though they all have the same title. He explained to her, watching as Issei rubbed his hair. How much advantage? A hundred levels? He asked the brunette, making Tiamat's smile widen. A little more, the dragon clarified. 120, she asked again, making Tiamat laugh. Stop making fun of him, Tiamat. Penemu commented, making the brunette look at her. The cadre simply lowered her gaze, and unleashed the bomb as if it were nothing. There are a thousand levels. An overwhelming silence appeared in the forest. The only thing that could be heard was Issei's tray falling to the ground. Chapter 37. Meeting Disaster, Interesting Encounters and Jealousy. 
In this way, Hitler convinced his people to be a superior race, or as he and the Nazis called it, an Aryan race. Penemu explained, making different surprisingly clear pictures, while all the students paid close attention. That made the Nazis consider themselves to be above all others, denigrating other humans who didn't belong to that race. Just like the Jews, he continued, finishing the drawing, then pointing at it with his chalk. This is a containment camp, a place where they locked up all the Jews, turned them into slaves and forced them to live in precarious conditions, even millions and millions died. Penemu began to add a large number of flags of different nationalities inside the containment field. The bell rang, causing many to start packing up their things, including Penemu herself. We will continue with the denouement in the next class. She clarified the cadre as she left the room, without first giving Issei a quick glance. The brown-haired man just nodded with a smile, saying goodbye to the woman. Hey, Issei, Matsuda turned quickly from his seat, gaining the brunette's attention. Don't you want to do something today? He asked the bald man, getting a quick no from Issei. I'm sorry, but I'm very busy, the brown-haired man answered making Matsuda heave a big sigh of annoyance. You've been telling us that for a week now, Motohama commented, joining the conversation. Don't overexert yourself, she finished, adjusting her glasses. Don't worry, she exclaimed the brunette with a toothy smile on his face. Murayama quickly joined the trio, giving Matsuda a big kiss on the cheek, making him blush. Won't you be able to come with us again? The woman asked, hugging Motohama tightly making him blush even more. I'm sure you don't want to come, because you'll feel left out if you go unaccompanied. Aika declared, hugging Motohama from behind. And it's not that, seriously. Issei fiercely waved his hands to emphasize her words, while a nervous smile took over her face. Aika gave a small sigh. I know, she was just joking, she concluded, thinking that perhaps her joke had gone a little too far. When you finish that activity of yours, let us know. It's not that we want to show you what a good couple we are, we just want you to join us as good friends having fun together. Exact, Murayama exclaimed with a big smile on her face. You have proven to be a very good boy, and for that reason we would like the five of us to spend more time together. Actually, it's thanks to you that we ended up together. Aika continued, causing Issei to give both of them a smile. Do not worry, he lightened the chestnut. Once he's freed, we'll have a big barbecue. I like how it sounds, Matsuda exclaimed with a toothy grin, as she gave her a thumbs up. So, see you tomorrow, Motohama placed his hand on Issei's shoulder as a farewell gesture, making everyone leave. The chestnut stood there alone, looking intently at the nearest window. I'm very happy for the two of them, the brown-haired man thought with a somewhat melancholic look. Although Aika is right, she gives me a bit of, I don't know, the brown-haired man couldn't help but smile a little sadly. If Yuma had been real, we'd be triple dating by now, the brunette thought rather gracefully. But would it really have been better if Yuma existed, and Rainer never killed me? He wondered, pondering the answer for a few seconds. Of course not, the brunette laughed for a second, mocking his own thoughts. The supernatural world is a very dangerous thing, but fantastic, Issei couldn't help but lower his head a bit. Although the fantastic is only achieved thanks to all those people I met in the journey of these five months. Diedrag, Gasper, Azazel, Rias, Tannen. The names came to his head, until his eyes widened slightly. Yes, if Yuma had been real, he would never have met Penemu and Tiamat. The brunette couldn't help but give a little she sighed as the most beautiful smiling face presented to her by both women flashed across her mind, most likely, the pain I feel because of Rainer will never go away. But if we compare it with everything I've gained, all the time and the good memories I have with the two of them, the brown-haired man thought, unable to help but smile when said memories flashed through his mind. If we compare all that with the pain I feel, that pain is nothing, he finished, not realizing that his last words were said out loud. Tannen, the names came to his head, until his eyes widened slightly. If, if Yuma had been real, he would never have met Penemu and Tiamat. The brown-haired man couldn't help but sigh as the smiling face became more the beauty presented to her by both women flashed through her mind, most likely, the pain I feel because of Rainer will never go away. But if we compare it with everything I've gained, 
all the time and the good memories I have with the two of them, the brown-haired man thought, unable to help but smile when said memories flashed through his mind. If we compare all that with the pain I feel, that pain is nothing, he finished, not realizing that his last words were said out loud. Tannen, the names came to his head, until his eyes widened slightly. If, if Yuma had been real, he would never have met Penemu and Tiamat. The brown-haired man couldn't help but sigh as the smiling face became more the beauty presented to her by both women flashed through her mind, most likely, the pain I feel because of Rainair will never go away. But if we compare it with everything I've gained, all the time and the good memories I have with the two of them, the brown-haired man thought, unable to help but smile when said memories flashed through his mind. If we compare all that with the pain I feel, that pain is nothing, he finished, not realizing that his last words were said out loud. Yes, if Yuma had been real, he would never have met Penemu and Tiamat. The brown-haired man couldn't help but sigh as the most beautiful smiling face presented to him by both women flashed across his mind. Most likely, the pain I feel because of Rainair will never go away. But if we compare it with everything I've gained, all the time and the good memories I have with the two of them, the brown-haired man thought, unable to help himself smile as those memories flashed through her mind. If we compare all that with the pain I feel, that pain is nothing, he finished not realizing that her last words were said out loud. Yes, if Yuma had been real, he would never have met Penemu and Tiamat. The brown-haired man couldn't help but sigh as the most beautiful smiling face presented to him by both women flashed across his mind. Most likely, the pain I feel because of Rainair will never go away. But if we compare it with everything I've gained, all the time and the good memories I have with the two of them, the brown-haired man thought, unable to help himself smile as those memories flashed through her mind. If we compare all that with the pain I feel, that pain is nothing. He finished, not realizing that her last words were said out loud. I would never have met Penemu and Tiamat. The brown-haired man couldn't help but sigh as the most beautiful smiling face presented to him by both women crossed his mind. Most likely, the pain I feel because of Rainair will never go away. But if we compare it with everything I've gained, all the time and the good memories I have with the two of them, the brown-haired man thought, unable to help but smile when said memories flashed through his mind. If we compare all that with the pain I feel, that pain is nothing, he finished, not realizing that his last words were said out loud. I would never have met Penemu and Tiamat. The brown-haired man couldn't help but sigh as the most beautiful smiling face presented to him by both women crossed his mind. Most likely, the pain I feel because of Rainair will never go away. But if we compare it with everything I've gained, all the time and the good memories I have with the two of them, the brown-haired man thought, unable to help but smile when said memories flashed through his mind. If we compare all that with the pain I feel, that pain is nothing, he finished, not realizing that his last words were said out loud. I finally found you, you dynamic brat, Azazel exclaimed, something that surprised the brunette. After all, it was rare for Azazel to search for him so badly. It is urgent, the Kadri exclaimed, causing Issei to get up from his seat immediately. A minute later, at the occult club, clear this up quick, Penemu declared, crossing her legs in her chair, while Tiamat stretched out her arms beside her. I don't want Issei's training to be delayed any longer than necessary. The woman concluded, seeing Rias and the others settled in another chair, while Azazel was sitting at the desk. There was a big problem at the meeting, Azazel said, resting a hand on his chin. Loki has interfered, and he started spouting a lot of bullshit about devils and fallen angels, until he finally demanded your presence. He concluded, fixing his gaze on Issei, who was standing at the door along with Gaspar and Kiba. Since no one wanted to pay attention to him, a great commotion arose. What do I have to do with this? He asked the brunette, pointing to himself. Loki didn't say anything about it, Azazel replied, closing his eyes. Most likely, Odin knows something about it, or he must have a clue at the very least. In that case, we'll go ask him personally, Penemu declared, causing Azazel to raise an eyebrow. Didn't you want to waste a lot of time? The Kadri asked, if a god is looking for Issei, it can't mean anything good. Tiamat entered the conversation, frowning regardless of whether the god wants to help him or kill him. 
Odin said that he would stay at the meeting place, since he couldn't move because of the huge barrier he built. Rias declared, causing Tiamat to raise an eyebrow. Barrier, she asked, resting her hand on her chin with interest. Odin will explain when you get there. Azazel explained, watching as the three of them lined up to leave. Keep your eyes open, Azazel warned, as he created the magic circle. If Loki was there, some of his minions might be lurking in the area. He finished, receiving a nod from all three before disappearing. At the meeting place, Issei stared at the luxurious building in great amazement. It was a huge structure which, from the large space and the various rooms, seemed to be heavily used. Along the way, Issei came across different devils that were close in age to him, though he didn't get a chance to look at them much as they were all in such a rush. He concluded that it was due to what had happened recently. Finally they reached the immense main hall and the only thing they saw in the sector was Odin in the highest window with his hands outstretched, while he was guarded by a woman. It's that Valkyrie, she thought the chestnut when she saw Rossweiss, remembering that she was the old man's right hand. The Sekariote, Ross wondered, dropping his stance a bit. Hearing the name, Odin turned his head. So you came, the old man asked, and I see that you did it in good company. He finished looking at the two beautiful women that covered his back. What are you doing? He asked the brunette, receiving a gesture from Odin to come closer. See for yourself, the god commented, making Issei and his two companions go up the stairs. When the brunette stuck his face out the window, his eyes widened with great shock. Outside was a huge ice dome with hundreds of magic circles surrounding it. In there I have my troublesome son, the god commented. Wait a second, Issei said, narrowing his eyes at seeing something strange. The magic circles, he continued, watching as one by one they were cracking, albeit at a very, very slow pace. If I had been around 40,000 years younger, I wouldn't have so much trouble punishing my son. The god commented with grace, although the sweat that ran down his face did not allow him to appreciate the joke. Unfortunately, I am already old, and the power that was once brimming with me is slowly fading. Now, my two sons are stronger than me, although I can still give them a lot of trouble if I want to. He continued, letting out a small laugh. Most likely, I'll be completely exhausted in a week. But at the very least, Loki will consume almost all of his strength to escape the seal. That will make it very easy to stop him. Far from caring what the old man was babbling about, Tiamat stepped forward imposingly. We want to know what Loki has with Issei. She declared the dragon, indicating that she didn't feel like hearing about his family troubles and the tragedy that befell the old man with age. Yes, I already imagined that's why they came, the god clarified, wiping the sweat with one of his hands. To be honest, I have no idea. Lord Odin, do you remember the strange movements Loki was making before the first meeting with the other factions? He added the Valkyrie, making the old man's eyes widen slightly. Maybe it has something to do with you, Brat, the god commented, before looking at him with great seriousness. I'll just warn you one thing. Odin couldn't help but frown. For whatever reason, I know very well that Loki wouldn't demand someone's presence just to have a friendly little chat. Don't think too much about it. They all looked back to see Sirzex. My sister and Sona will see to it that Loki is successfully contained when he breaks the seal. The Mal couldn't help but cross his arms. Of course, you are in that group, and you can ask him personally. Don't you think it's a bit risky? The brunette asked, pointing to himself. As I said earlier, Loki will be too exhausted to be a problem. Odin declared, the real problem is the large number of minions he has. Behind him, he cleared himself, looking serious at him. Here we are on the edge of a hell city. Take for granted that they will come to buy time to free Loki through great havoc. He explained himself, then stared at him. That's where the Valkyries, Seraphal, Sirzex and all the other demons with great power come in. They will take it upon themselves to contain the attack on the city. He finished, making Issei nod in understanding. Even so, facing a god, Penemu couldn't help lowering her gaze, denoting great concern in her. It is an unbeatable opportunity. She declared the Dragoness, making both Penemu and Issei shocked. If Issei has a very big goal in mind while he continues training, it might lead him to give a plus that we need. Besides, Tiamat looked at Issei, seeing her state. 
Look at his hands. He's shaking with excitement at the thought. Penemu watched Issei, watching as the brunette gave her a flaming look, causing the cadre to heave a huge sigh at the end. You can tell very easily that you were trained by a dragon, Penemu commented, patting her face. I'm starting to seriously suspect that you're more of a dragon than a demon. Hearing the latter, Issei couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. Because you said so, she asked. You think like a dragon, and you act like a dragon. Tiamat replied, her chest puffing out with pride in him. Although, being a dragon myself, I can see that those actions also have human reasoning. After all, it's still curious. Penemu commented, human and dragon, but not demon, since you are that, a demon. I guess it's because of Diedrag's influence. More than an answer, it was a question. Asterisk because of me you have distinctive dragon traits, but that doesn't mean that because of those traits you should behave almost like one. The dragon clarified through the gauntlet, making the brunette rub his hair. Forget it, we're way off topic. Penemu waved her hands, ending the conversation. Since you're going to face a god, it's best to stop wasting time and start right now. He concluded, taking Issei's hand with great force, making the chestnut's face turn pale. In that case, Penemu, Issei and Tiamat looked back when they heard Rosweiss's voice. They could train alongside the Valkyries. This proposal not only surprised the three of them, since Odin also looked surprised. We usually don't allow outsiders into Asgard, but it's the least we can do, since the trouble was caused by one of our own. He continued the Valkyrie, then looked at the old man. Don't you agree, Lord Odin? Actually, I think it's a great idea. She declared herself, fixing her gaze on Issei. The training of the Valkyries is extremely fierce and exhausting, which is why they are the best warriors and the best army that exists today. The god stated proudly, I've heard that only 15 of the 1,000 women who enter make it through the first year of training, Penemu thought aloud, rubbing her chin. Yes, it is that complicated. But I know that the three of you will be able to handle it without any problems. The Valkyrie commented with a smile, earning their attention again. Tiamat, Penemu and Issei looked at each other, pondering the answer for a few seconds. Very well, we will go to Asgard. The Kadri spoke for the three of them, earning a big smile from Rossweiss. In that case, pack your things for tomorrow. The Valkyrie exclaimed, it will be a very intense and fun week of concentration. A few hours later, in the cursed forest, Penemu was sitting at a desk in the middle of the woods, reading certain papers with her glasses on. In the distance, slight disturbances could be heard, indicating that Issei was being trained by Tiamat. You have a lot of free time, don't you? The Kadri asked, ordering a stack of papers. As cold as always, Azazel commented without paying much attention to her behavior, sitting down next to her. I just came to pay you a little visit. Well, as you can see, I'm pretty busy. Answered Penemu, without taking her eyes off her papers. I just wanted to know the reason behind going to Asgard. The Kadri's comment made Penemu look at him for a second. After all, your training is second to none, as is your tutoring. It's only a week. It was Penemu's simple comment as she held up a sheet and read it. I don't have the time or the necessary resources to do the type of training that I want. She explained herself, giving him a rather serious look. Not having Phoenix tears, the process was greatly complicated, since Issei will not be able to heal from one second to the next. And we are not talking about superficial injuries. She continued to explain balling up the paper and then tossing it aside. I studied the possibilities, and I think it's best for him to go train somewhere where you don't take a lot of physical damage, but it's still very effective. And why does your training necessarily have to be so deadly? Azazel asked, raising an eyebrow. Isn't there a way to change it? Do you think I didn't think of it before? She asked, raising an eyebrow. Issei is about to reach the top of his physical condition. The boosted gear can obviously bring great advantages in the future, but that's not the main idea. She stated, then placed her hand under her chin as she removed her glasses. Besides learning my techniques with the katana, I want Issei to learn how to move like me. This last statement made Azazel's eyes widen, and the only way he can develop that speed in those movements is by simulating real battles against me until he can't move anymore. Penemu got up from her seat leaving her glasses on the table. For the obvious sake of it, it's more than obvious that that kind of training is going to hurt him pretty bad. Besides, 
There's also another reason, the woman commented, just before she disappeared into the trees. And may I know it? The cadre asked, looking at her with great intrigue. Penemu lowered her head for a short second, then looked at Azazel. As you know, Issei had a big problem with a fallen angel. A problem so big that it caused him a strong trauma. The cadre couldn't help but look down at her with some empathy in her eyes for what she was saying. In Asgard, the Valkyries are beautiful women, but most important of all, they are honorable, brave, and very trustworthy. I think if he took Issei there and he meets a Valkyrie, maybe the trauma will eventually leave him. She concluded, leaving the place. Azazel only saw her disappear among the trees, and then gave a small sigh. You could have started with that part. The cadre thought aloud, unable to help but smile when he saw Penemu's great concern for the chestnut. The next day, Issei, Penemu and Tiamat were walking calmly in the thick woods near the huge building where the meeting took place yesterday, giving it one last look to make sure there was no one suspicious nearby. Standing guard is pretty boring. She thought the brunette with a bored look while he had both hands on the back of his neck. I hope it dawns soon to go with the Valkyrie. Issei concluded his thoughts, unable to help but give a big yawn at the end. Meanwhile, Penemu and Tiamat were gossiping behind his back quite energetically. In fact, it was very rare to see them like that first thing in the morning. So, shall we wait and see which is the most suitable Valkyrie? Tiamat asked under her breath, making sure Issei didn't hear her. I already have one in mind, and I'm sure you know which one I mean. She whispered the, Kadri, looking sideways at the brunette. Still, remember that we won't mess with their relationship. You just have to see that everything is natural, and if at any time Ross needs help or advice, we'll provide it. I understand, the dragon nodded, though perhaps we're already assuming too quickly that the two of them might feel some kind of attraction to each other, she clarified, rubbing her hair. You're right, we'll stay out of it at first, Penemu explained. What we do have to make sure is that no opportunist tries to get close to him, because a woman like that will end up sinking him. Don't worry about that, the dragon clarified, after all, it is the simplest part of this whole plan. She finished with great confidence in herself, making Penemu nod in agreement. After all, they had both done a great job when Zenovia tried to take advantage of Issei. It was such a well done job that the woman never approached the chestnut tree again with those intentions. The bad thing is that they had both concentrated so much on their important conversation that they didn't realize the presence of a certain Nekomata until they were on top of her. Oh, look at the great specimen we have around here. The three of them instantly stopped and quickly settled into their fighting stances, intently watching the source of the sound. Relax, the woman on top of the tree exclaimed, the two tips of her black tail drifting comfortably between her hands. I'm not here to fight, I'm just here to do my job. Her black cat ears twitched in great happiness as they caught the sound of the boosted gear. My sense of smell did not fail me, if it was you. She finished, outlining a somewhat daring smile. This last caused Penemu and Tiamat to narrow their eyes in great suspicion. They put you in charge too? The brunette asked, not paying much attention to the clearly predatory look that the Nekomata was giving him. Don't be fooled, Issei. Penemu declared with great seriousness. It's a Nekomata. That species is nearly extinct, and only Kaneko is registered within the demonic forces. She finished, watching as the cat woman leaned against her trunk, making her breasts stand out even more through her black kimono, which she matched perfectly with her tied black hair. How has it been living together with Sharon? The woman's question took the brunette by surprise. You mean Kaneko? Issei asked, slightly surprised. Is that what my sister calls herself now? The Nekomata asked, narrowing her amber eyes, doing a small somersault to fall to the ground. Your sister, she exclaimed the chestnut with great surprise. Well, she was, the woman closed her eyes with some pain, although that expression didn't last long on her face. My name is Kuroka, and that woman is right. The now recognized as Kuroka introduced herself, fixing her gaze on Penemu. Let's just say that I'm here not only on orders, but also out of curiosity she concluded, turning her gaze back to Issei. And that curiosity has rewarded me exquisitely, she finished, opting again for that attractive look that sent an icy chill through the cadre and the dragon. Wait, if you say Sirzex didn't send you, 
Far from feeling a bit overwhelmed by the flirtatious feeling that was hitting him, Issei quickly went on the defensive. Then who was? He asked, raising his gauntlet and clenching his fist tight. I think you already know Valley. The woman's comment made the chestnut's skin goosebumps. He's spoken well of you. He says he can't wait to fight you again. Kuroka said, making Issei's fist clench even tighter, while Penemu and Tiamat seemed to start preparing to take her down. But, as I said before, I only accepted the order out of curiosity. This made the brunette raise an eyebrow in response. After all, I am already mature enough to reproduce, and I want to rebuild my species with children that are very strong. Kuroka licked one of her fingers, making Issei pout. Quote dot 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 quote. And what the hell does that have to do with your curiosity? Issei asked, after going through the most uncomfortable seconds of her life. My curiosity told me that if I went to a dangerous place, I could meet men with great power, and therefore, I would find a strong genetic material willing to give me many powerful children. She explained, taking a few steps forward. Well, I guess it's logical, the brunette thought aloud, rubbing his hair. My name is Issei, he concluded, taking a few steps forward, before extending his hand with a smile. Kuroka looked at the hand for a second, then looked at him. Aren't you afraid of me? She asked herself with a small smile. You are from the Chaos Brigade, but Valley made it clear that his group did not seek to cause any evil, and that they were not obsessed with power. He replied Issei with a toothy smile. Let's say they're just looking to have fun. Kuroka looked at him with slight surprise after his words, before giving him a small smile. You're right, we're just looking to have fun, the woman clarified, narrowing her eyes slightly. Issei couldn't help but blink in great confusion as Kuroka hugged him tightly, instead of just shaking his hand. This obviously alerted both Penemu and Tiamat, and his wide eyes were proof of that. You know something, Valley is the strongest man I know. She commented the Nekomata, hugging him tighter. But he's someone very boring, so he doesn't want to have any kind of relationship with me, she continued, raising her face to look at the brunette, who looked stunned by everything that was happening. Since you are the wielder of the other heavenly dragon, wouldn't you like to do it with me? She whispered in his ear with a purr, which was easily heard by the other two women. We can play all the ways you want, as long as you give me my children. Stop. Penemu separated her from Issei with a strong push, standing in front of the brunette. Who do you think you are to make those kinds of proposals? She asked herself, crossing her arms. Are you his partner? Kuroka asked causing a slight blush to appear on Penemu and Issei's face. No, the Kadri replied after a few seconds. So who do you think you are to interfere? Kuroka returned the question, frowning slightly. That's not important. Both Issei and Penemu watched as Tiamat stood in front of the Nekomata, who was unaffected by his presence at all. We won't let opportunistic bitches like you take advantage of Issei. The dragon grabbed her by her kimono, causing Kuroka's feet to leave the ground. Hey guys, Issei's smile quickly twisted to a nervous one when he felt the weather really heavy. We can, the brunette's smile became more and more hesitant, seeing how the three women had death stares. Calm down, Issei's last word was practically inaudible, being completely dominated by the environment. Issei's eyes widened as Penemu hugged him protectively and they jumped away. If he tells me in his own words, I wouldn't have a problem, jealous. Kuroka's answer made Tiamat clench her teeth tightly, at the same time that a thin blush appeared on his face. What did you call me? The dragon's tone was very threatening. Kuroka slowly approached his hatred, then whispered. It's not my problem that you can't control your own fear. Tiamat looked slightly stunned by such words, to which Kuroka took advantage, giving her a strong paw to free herself. A deep blush shot up the chestnut's face as Tiamat's clothing was torn to shreds. The most intimate part of his breasts was only covered by his own hair. Penemu acted instantly, covering Issei's eyes with her hand. Damned, she roared Tiamat angrily, grabbing her by her hair just in time, causing Kuroka to give a small cry. The Nekomata responded in the same way and began to pull her hair, while she felt how her rival was destroying the front part of her kimono. Both women rolled on the floor and continued to pull their hair, while trying to give various blows. The movements of both women made it seem that they were in a clear catfight. I don't know what that woman said to him, but Tiamat was influenced by his words. 
she thought the cadre, seeing that the dragon was acting strangely. He could have already knocked her unconscious, but he wants to humiliate her to show her that his feelings are much more powerful than the Nekomata's ambition. Henemu continued to study how both women attacked each other and rolled on the floor, making her body sexy as hell. Tiamat will press into Kuroka's with great force. Should she intervene, he concluded, watching as Issei had placed both of her hands over hers to make sure he didn't see anything that was happening. Hi, Issei's scream made the three women look at him in surprise. The brunette uncovered his eyes and quickly took off his jacket, tossing it to the two women who had the upper half of their bodies exposed. Tiamat simply watched as the jacket fell over the bare part of her body, without letting go of Kuroka's hair, which, incidentally, the Nekomata hadn't let go of either. Issei slowly approached Kuroka and handed over his shirt, not caring about the fact that his torso was left completely exposed. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't want to have anything with you. He commented on the brunette, helping to get the two women to their feet. I fully understand your reasons, but for that very reason I cannot accept. Kuroka just looked at him in great confusion at her words. If you want to build a family, make sure your children's father wants his children too. I completely understand that you think you'll be enough, but it won't be easy for them. Issei placed a hand on Kuroka's shoulder, giving him a small smile. If you really want your children to be strong, they need both a mother and a father. Kuroka simply smiled at him and shook his head, pulling away as he put on his shirt. You don't have to make up that whole story to say that you don't want to have relations with me. The Nekomata commented, making the brunette's face acquire a nervous smile. I stuck to what I said. Issei quickly defended himself, before shyly rubbing his hair. Although it's also true that I don't find you attractive at all, she continued, causing Kuroka to raise an eyebrow. I I didn't mean that, she yelled, waving her hands fiercely. I it's just... I I'm not interested in being with any woman. Does that mean you don't see attractiveness in any woman? Kuroka asked, raising her eyebrow even higher. Exact, he exclaimed the brunette, just at the same time that the different images of Tiamat and Penemu clouded his mind. No, wait, that's not accurate. Issei quickly grabbed his hair with both of his hands. What the hell am I saying? By now, the three women were looking at him as if he had gone crazy. You're like Valley. Kuroka commented. Very good for battles, but a completely unintelligible being when it comes to other matters. The Nekomata raised her face for a short second, to then look back at the brunette. In fact, you are even stranger than Valley. All that happened aside, you'd better give us the specifics of your visit to the underworld. Tiamat commented, finishing putting on Issei's jacket. If you are concerned about your safety, I must tell you that I do not work for any of the factions. And although Penemu and Issei are fully involved, they both fully understand that their group is not the one causing so many complications. The dragon clarified, receiving a quick nod from Kuroka. I know perfectly well. Valley told me that the dragon queen spit on the faction's rule, and that Penemu was just like Azazel. She cleared the Nekomata, to then fix her gaze on Issei. While the Sekiryote was someone different, the brunette instantly guessed that being different, should mean something good from Valley's point of view. For that very reason, I approached you without precautions. Kuroka explained, then jumped up a tree. All I know is that Valley has been chasing a man for years to kill him. This statement not only surprised Issei, but also Penemu, who knew the albino perfectly well. He's supposed to be someone powerful, so we're always looking for powerful energy sources to help us find his whereabouts. Unfortunately, we're always wrong he concluded, with a sigh covered in exhaustion from his last words. What kind of man is that? Penemu asked, gaining Kuroka's attention. Valley wouldn't go and kill anyone, unless it was really necessary. Does Brand Kangelman ring a bell? The Nekomata asked, causing Tiamat and Issei to widen their eyes at her. That's all I can tell you. She clarified herself, preparing to leave. Wait, Issei stopped her, making the woman raise an eyebrow. Why did you say that Kaneko wasn't your sister anymore? She asked the brunette, making Kuroka's eyes flood with anger and sadness. I, I was much stronger than Sharon, and that was what saved me. Kuroka couldn't help lowering his head and taking a deep breath, remembering that fateful day. We come from a species that was completely wiped out. We don't even remember the faces of our parents, 
I only remember the demon master who treated us with care and loved us, or so it seemed. The Nekomata clenched her fist tightly, remembering the man who hated most in his life. One day, he brought a chess piece, and I let that protect us. I, being so innocent, was the first to volunteer. The bastard tried to embed the bishop piece into my body, but couldn't. He said I was too strong enough to use one of the old pieces, and so I was going to put on one of the new ones, which are now known as, mutated pieces. Kuroka couldn't help but put a hand to his chest, making a violet bishop piece shine brightly on his chest. As soon as the piece entered my body, I noticed the changes. I nearly fainted from the painful transformation my body was undergoing, but somehow I managed to stay conscious. The nature of my body quickly warned me that the embedded piece made strange interference with the demonic transformation, so my mind couldn't be corrupted by the transformation. And, on top of that, I felt a kind of bondage towards that man, something that made us slaves. Kuroka couldn't help but grit his teeth at the memory. After that, it's all a blur. I only remember killing the bastard and starting a huge fire that destroyed the entire mansion, all of that to make sure that Sharon didn't get the piece. Kuroka couldn't help but muster a look of utter sadness. In the end, I had forgotten that I was just an eight-year-old girl, and that I wasn't going to understand anything. What did I do? She just scolded me, and said that she would hate me forever as she broke from my arms and ran towards the city. I tried to reach her, but my body was too weak, so I had no choice but to run away and leave her there, and she said she would hate me forever as she broke away from my arms and ran towards the city. I tried to reach her, but my body was too weak, so I had no choice but to run away and leave her there, and she said she would hate me forever as she broke away from my arms and ran towards the city. I tried to reach her, but my body was too weak, so I had no choice but to run away and leave her there. And then he met Rias, the brunette commented, finishing the story. Kuroka lowered her face, wiping away the tears that threatened to spill from her eyes. From what I see, you must already know that demonic corruption destroys a person completely. That's why I know that Sharon has already died, and that he will never come back, the Nekomata finished her story, turning to leave. It's true that demonic corruption rages, but Kaneko is still. She, Kuroka interrupted him, looking at him out of the corner of his eye. If I learned anything from my stay in hell, it's that nowadays demons don't destroy through power or force, he commented, closing his eyes. She may be paranoid, but you're too trusting. She cleared herself, opening her eyes and giving her an unreadable look. Be careful, the trusting ones are the easiest to manipulate, he finished, disappearing into the trees. I understand you perfectly, but not all demons are the same, Issei answered him, even though Kuroka was already quite far away. Tiamat, Penemu commented, fixing her gaze on the dragon, who found herself blushing slightly as she sniffed at Issei's jacket. You know very well that I'm not interested in all that stupid discussion about demons. Trash is trash, and it will never stop being trash. She answered the dragon casually, turning her back on the chestnut so she wouldn't see what she was doing. You know quite well I didn't want to talk about it. The cadre narrowed her eyes in disapproval at the same time that her harsh voice brought Tiamat finally out of her little unfounded dream. I don't know what you're talking about, Tiamat muttered, looking away with a slight frown. Issei simply rubbed his cheek with his finger seeing how Penemu seemed to scold Tiamat for the childish attitude she had towards Kuroka. I think it's about time we met with the Valkyrie. He commented on the brunette, making the two women look at him. You're right, Tiamat reaffirmed the chestnut's words, seeing that the dawn light began to filter through the trees. Again in this place, the brown-haired man thought aloud, seeing the enormous reception that belonged to Odin. Speaking of which, you never got to get a glimpse of the city, did you? Rossweiss asked, receiving a refusal from the brunette. What is that sound? Tiamat asked, hearing a strange sound coming from outside. Allow me to welcome you to Asgard. He stated the Valkyrie with a smile, using a bit of her magic to slowly open the giant mechanized window. The sounds quickly intensified, and could be made out to be a large number of perfectly timed screams. The four of them went out onto the huge balcony, causing a great blow to cover their visions for a short second. Once they were able to open their eyes again, the brunette and his two companions couldn't help but be surprised at the sight. In the distance, you could see huge mountains that completely surrounded the site, 
while a huge city with quite exotic architectures rose up like huge buildings and small venues. From the height that they were, it was possible to witness how the city looked like a huge circle that looked towards the same point. All these structures looked towards the center of the enormous flow of water that occupied a large number of meters in the center of the city, only being a little covered by the huge bridge that was in the middle, linked to the place where they were. Speaking of which, Issei looked up from her to study the large building more intently, only to blink in great astonishment. Fantastic! He exclaimed the chestnut, seeing that the supposed building was actually a huge castle, and like the rest of the city, the architecture was very peculiar. After all, it was completely golden, and it looked like a kind of pyramid built through thin rectangles, where each one seemed to have a room. Although the place where they were, was the largest rectangle and the exclusive one that stood out conspicuously from the others, besides being the only one that had a balcony to go outside. Issei quickly lowered his gaze again, watching as all the Valkyries did repetitions in unison, indicating that this is where the battle cries came from. It was a natural thing to hear, as there were thousands of them on the bridge, lining up all the way to the end of the bridge. Rossweiss leaned over the railing and rested her hands on it, watching her teammates practice. Instantly, all the Valkyries abandoned their training, taking a firm step and placing one of their hands on their chests, generating a loud bang as their hands collided with their armor. Long live the kingdom, long live Odin, long live Gondol, Larga Vita Rossweiss. The declarations of all the Valkyries caused Issei to be greatly surprised, especially by the last thing he had heard. The Valkyrie simply greeted with a beautiful smile on her face, making all the Valkyries bow their heads in respect, before continuing with their training. All this, with a timing that was very scary. Very good, Rossweiss commented to herself, before turning around. I think it's time to start, she declared with a cute smile not paying much attention to the fact that Issei had a clearly agitated expression on her face. Chapter 38. The Next Queen of the Valkyries. Rossweiss walked out the front door accompanied by her guests, watching as the large group of Valkyries continued to train. The Valkyrie quickly addressed the woman who was in front of the army. From what it seemed, she was the one who indicated the repetitions to follow, as if they were a great orchestra perfectly synchronized. Issei just watched from the top of the stairs how all the women did their training without even flinching, something that really impressed him. After all, it's the first time she's seen anything like that. Seeing Ross approaching, the woman with the long, wavy brown hair stopped. She was quite a beautiful Valkyrie. As seemed to be the custom among these Asgardian women, she had a nice figure and her face was quite pretty. The only thing that reduced her beauty a little, was the fact that a large scar crossed her non-existent eye, which reached to her neck. Continue replays until further notice. The woman exclaimed, receiving a quick, understood, from all the Valkyries, who didn't take a second to resume their march. I see you brought some interesting people, Ross, the brunette commented, giving the three guests a small smile. Would you mind introducing them? They are Issei, Tiamat, and Penemu. They are here to receive special training on Odin's orders. The Valkyrie commented, causing the brunette to fix her gaze on Tiamat with great surprise. Guys, this is Gondal, the current queen of the Valkyries, and my grandmother. She concluded, with a cute smile at her last words. I never thought I would see the strongest dragon queen in Asgard. Let alone imagine that she would want to receive Disir training, the woman now known as Gondal commented, causing Tiamat to place a hand on Issei's head. Actually, I'm not interested in training. The woman declared, giving the brunette a look. The one who really wants to take the training, is Issei. I'm here along with Penemu to make sure everything goes smoothly. Although, we will also take the opportunity to train, added Penemu, receiving a nod from Gondal. So, a man training among the Valkyries. The brunette thought, giving the brunette a look. In addition, to being accompanied by one of the strongest entities that exist. And obviously, I can't ignore her, he concluded fixing her gaze on Penemu. The woman was looking at them for a few seconds, creating a somewhat tense atmosphere in the place. The brunette quickly looked around, beginning to feel slightly harassed by the glances that Gondol was exchanging between them. Well, the woman shrugged. Orders are orders. Welcome to Asgard. She finished the woman, shaking her hand in greeting. First of all, I must tell you something, Grandma. Ross commented, making the woman look at her intrigued. 
Lord Odin ordered me to personally train them. That way, they will be my first pupil, before I am 20,021 years old. Hump, I guess the old man thinks of everything. The Queen of the Valkyries exclaimed with a small smile, slapping Rossweiss hard on the shoulder, who only deigned to rub the affected area with a nervous smile. Now that I think about it, who are you really? The brown-haired question made the four ladies look at him. That is to say, you are the right hand of Odin, you are also applauded and respected by all the Valkyries. And now, the old man commissions you to personally train us, Issei commented, rubbing her hair with great curiosity. Our lineage comes from the Disir, Gondol declared, gaining everyone's attention. Our genetics have been diluted over the years, but our body still has divine genes. The answer surprised the chestnut immensely. The women born of our lineage will always be destined to be Valkyrie queens. Gondol pointed to herself, I am the current queen, and once Ross reaches his physical 25th birthday, she will be crowned the next queen of the Valkyries. That sounds amazing, the brunette exclaimed, clenching his fist tightly. Why didn't you ever tell me about that? He asked, making Rossweiss rub her hair in embarrassment. Well, we've never had much time to talk, the Valkyrie commented, making Issei realize that was a very silly question. Do you want to know anything else? Gondol asked, looking at the brunette with a small amused smile after his reaction. Only one, the brown-haired commented, to then assemble the most confused expression he had ever seen. How come they can be granddaughter and grandmother? The question caused Gondol and Ross to look at each other in great confusion. I mean, you look like 30, and she looks a little past 20. Oh, I get it, Rossweiss exclaimed, high-fiving her hands. You are a reincarnated devil, so you must not be too used to supernatural life yet. Ross quickly positioned himself next to his grandmother, flashing a cute smile. Although it seems that there is only six years difference between us, in reality we are more than 25,000 years apart. He finished, making Issei rub his cheek. It's true, I had forgotten that detail, he commented to himself, slightly lowering his gaze. Do you want to start now, Ross? Gondol asked. They can join the formation whenever they want. Before starting, they told me to mix up Issei's training. The Valkyrie commented, causing Gondol to raise an eyebrow. Does that mean they alternate? Asked the chestnut. Yes, but we won't do many times. Penemu answered. I just want to add some basic teachings that he hasn't contemplated yet. If Ross sees no problem with it, then neither do I. The Queen of the Valkyries nodded with a small smile, then nodded to them with her head. Now join the group to start the replays. They all nodded without giving it much importance, going down the stairs. The brown-haired man felt a little more impressed when he saw the training up close, since no Valkyrie flinched in his presence. By the way, Valkyrie, Rossweiss looked over her shoulders at being mentioned. How many repetitions is, that, she asked herself, causing the Valkyrie to give her an innocent smile. There isn't a number, she pleaded not guilty. We do the repeats until the huge clock strikes 15. She concluded, pointing at the huge clock that was in the center of the pyramidal castle. But, it's 6 in the morning, the brunette commented, unable to avoid turning pale. Several hours later, what good is this exercise? He asked the brunette, holding his katana sideways with both hands as he remained seated, resembling some sort of meditation. In this type of exercise, your strength is not measured, but your resistance and, above all, your patience. Rossweiss answered, who was next to him making the same posture. In certain fights, patience can lead to victory. Especially if you know your opponent's weak points. Okay, how long do I have to hold it? The brunette asked, looking at his katana. Rossweiss just closed her eyes with a smile. Until the sunset. Great, what if you better not hold it for me? The brunette asked with his eyes blank. Tiamat was being part of the exercise with her ice sword. His hand slipped slightly, causing the sword to fall and generate a small crater accompanied by a loud crash, earning many shocked looks from the Valkyries. Damn, it slipped. The dragon commented as if it were nothing, picking up the sword again and getting into position, obliviously ignoring all the stares that were directed her way. Meanwhile, a large number of Valkyries stared wide-eyed at Penemu, who was in a lotus pose while holding her katana with only one finger 
in addition to every so often changing fingers and hands with an ability and impressive balance, denoting his great level of dominance over his weapon. The hours on the golden clock ticked by, making the daylight fade quickly. The marked time was 21, and all the Valkyries had already left. It's kind of annoying to be the only one who couldn't have the final fight, the brown-haired man commented from the stairs that led to the castle, being accompanied by Rossweiss. It would have been great to fight a Valkyrie, he finished, remembering how all the Valkyries fought, except for Gondol and Rossweiss. You can get tired, but you can't get hurt, Ross commented, giving her a disapproving look. Remember that you must arrive in optimal conditions to face Loki. I know, you're right, the brunette declared with a small snort then sat down on the stairs and watched as Tiamat and Penemu were fighting each other. Hey, what's up? She exclaimed the dragon with a big smile, crashing her sword against Penemu's katana numerous times, generating a large amount of sparks. Finally, the two weapons collided strongly, starting a small struggle. I thought you were much faster. Tiamat concluded her idea, taking advantage of the fact that they were both still. Penemu just smiled at her words, resuming the fight when she deflected the dragon's sword to the side with her own katana. I thought we were just having fun. The Kadri exclaimed, continuing the clash of frenzied attacks. After all, you would have torn me to shreds already if you took it more seriously too. She concluded her, causing both of them to clash their weapons strongly and start a little struggle again. The dragon couldn't help but give him a nice smile. Penemu responded to the gesture, starting the continuous clashes again. It looks like they're having fun, the brown-haired man thought with a smile, seeing the happy smiles of both women. This is amazing, Rossweiss sat down next to him, gaining Issei's attention. They said that the Dragon Queen was completely insane, and that it was impossible to reason with her. She declared the Valkyrie looking at Tiamat, then looking away from her to Penemu. And with Penemu, they said that she had become very dark and cold after the Great War. A woman who was no longer capable of smiling. And look at her now, she concluded, unable to help herself from inclining her shoulders at the end. People change, the brunette commented, earning Ross's attention. Well, not all of them. In fact, I'm not even sure if they really changed, he continued, while his eyes reflected the figure of both women. They just needed help, because, the truth is, they always were that great, and they always will be. He finished unable to help but feel very happy to see that the two women got along very well, besides that Joy already completely adorned their faces, unlike when he had met them. Rossweiss could only be impressed after hearing all the passion that each of her words conveyed. And not only that, since her look also transmitted a great amount of appreciation to those two women. Somehow, she felt a bit envious. You want them? The woman asked, receiving a shaved nod from the brunette. I've spent very little time with them, but all those memories I have with them are the best moments of my life. In fact, saying that I love them is little, he commented, lowering his head for a short second, meditating on the answer. I don't know how I can explain the affection I have for them, I would say that the two of them are all I need. A small smile appeared on the brunette after her own words. Yes, that's what they mean to me, she finished looking up again to see how Penemu and Tiamat continued to have fun. Rosswey stared at the brunette's expression for a few more seconds, where she could clearly see the passion and affection that emanated from his eyes. He seemed to pour out so much love for them, that he implied that his words fell short. In fact, there were no words that could describe what Issei felt for both women. I see, Rosswey finally answered, looking up at him with a small smile. Why do you insist on training so hard? The Valkyrie asked, drawing the brunette's attention. I don't think it's just to defeat Loki, the woman commented, causing Issei to look up at her to the sky. To get stronger, the brunette's answer sounded more like a question, making the Valkyrie start laughing. Oh look at me, I am Hyodo Issei, the bearer of Diedrake. I train to become stronger and prove that I am a man. The Valkyrie tried to imitate the tone of a man to mock the chestnut, causing Issei to sweat slightly. No. Wait, he exclaimed the brunette, waving his hands to emphasize his words. I don't seek to be stronger to prove that I am a man. He explained he, I just want to become stronger so that I can be of help to the people I care about when they need me. That is my main wish. The brunette's response slightly surprised Ross. 
In this world, there are always many problems. Therefore, I don't want to be a burden to my loved ones. Issei clenched his fist tightly. I want to be able to fight alongside them, and even save their lives if I have to. I know it will be an almost impossible task, but that won't stop me. Issei clenched his fist even harder, slightly lowering his gaze. All these people are my reason for being, it is the reason why I feel alive. Actually, it's quite the opposite, the woman commented, coming out of her surprise. That makes you more of a man than anyone. She concluded the Valkyrie with a beautiful smile, making Issei surprised by her words. Can we go to our rooms now? Tiamat asked, who was approaching along with Penemu. Are you done yet? The chestnut asked, jumping up. It was a lot of fun, but today I want to have dinner and go to bed early. Penemu declared, wiping the sweat from her brow with her hand. I agree, she commented the dragon, before, outlining a small smile, especially when it comes to going to bed early, she concluded, walking with Penemu and Issei towards the castle. Rossweiss just watched in surprise as the three of them walked with a great atmosphere around them, as if there were stars surrounding the figures of the three of them. Sleepy dragon, Penemu commented, causing Tiamat to cross her arms and give her a playful look. Do you want to continue training? She asked, because I don't mind being a little more serious. You can tell they had fun today. She exclaimed the brunette with a big toothy grin as he placed his hands behind his neck. You should have seen her faces. They both looked beautiful. She exclaimed the brunette with a little toothy giggle, not noticing how both women turned their faces away with an intense blush. Rossweiss continued to watch the interaction of those three unable to help but feel strangely moved by what she was seeing. Hey, Valkyrie, he exclaimed the brunette with a strange look after reaching the entrance. Will you tell us which are our rooms? He asked her, making Rossweiss jump slightly. Oh yeah, sorry, she exclaimed with a slight blush. I'm coming now, she yelled, running up the stairs quickly, to enter along with them. One hour later, Penemu was lying in her typical white pajamas. She was sitting, curled up in a somewhat tender way while she talked to the brunette, who was leaning against the exit door. The cadre's hair was wrapped in a towel, indicating that she had recently bathed. You really don't like it? The brunette asked, crossing his arms. It even has a fairly spacious bathroom, he concluded, making Penemu shake her head slightly. It's not the place, it's me, she replied the cadre, covering half of her face with her knees. Every time I visit an unknown place, I can't help but feel a little uncomfortable. Especially if I have to stay alone. She concluded herself, unable to help but give a small sigh at the end. Don't worry, nothing will happen. She answered the brunette with a smile, receiving a somewhat suspicious look from the cadre. If you have any problems, you can come see me. She declared herself, taking the doorknob. After all, my room is next door. She finished, giving a shaved salute before leaving receiving a nod from the cadre. Just when Issei was going to leave, he could see how Rossweiss came from the corridor. Oh Issei, she exclaimed the Valkyrie with a smile, quickly approaching the brunette. I was just looking for you. Ha me, the chestnut asked, pointing to himself. I wanted to know if you found the rooms cozy. Ross answered the brown-haired doubt, making him smile at him. They are perfect, the chestnut answered. Penemu has some problems, but it's personal. I guess in a day she'll get over it. He concluded her, receiving a somewhat hesitant nod from the Valkyrie. If you say so, he commented, then looked towards the nearest stairs. Before I go check on Tiamat, I'd like to ask you a favor. The brown-haired man couldn't help but raise an eyebrow at the proposal. What is it about? She asked herself, causing Rossweiss to look down from her in great embarrassment something that only intensified Issei's curiosity. I don't know if you remember, but the first time we met, Lord Odin had talked about my bachelorhood, he commented, causing a small light bulb to come on over the chestnut's head after remembering the talk that, from his point of view, it was kind of funny. I, I was wondering if you could help me behave properly, he explained, causing Issei to raise both eyebrows. I mean, I don't think any man approaches me because of my attitude, and, I've had a few dates, but they're always a disaster, Rossweiss clung tightly to the severed skirt. Of his armor, thousands of years have passed since the last time, 
The Valkyrie's eyes began to twitch, indicating that she was about to cry. Issei could only rub his hair with some pity at what the woman mentioned. But why are you in such a rush to get one? Asked the chestnut. I mean, I understand that it can be very frustrating to be alone for thousands of years, but, Issei couldn't help but sweat slightly when Rossweiss looked up with a face visibly damaged by her last words, where tears threatened to run down her face. Cheeks. Fuck it up. It was the only thing the brown-haired man could think after seeing such a devastating expression. It's not just frustration, the Valkyrie declared, doing her best not to cry. When we Valkyries reach 25 physical years, we are considered to be elite warriors. If any Valkyrie fails to get married before that age, it is considered a great disgrace. She explained herself, wiping away the tears that were threatening to roll down her face, opting for a much calmer look. I'm only a few months away from reaching that age. That's why I'm so worried. Now I understand you perfectly, the brunette thought aloud, rubbing his chin. But, I'm afraid you're choosing the wrong person. She commented with a nervous smile, making Ross blink in disbelief. You see, I am completely useless when it comes to this subject. You should find someone who will really help you and who has experience, or at least who is not completely useless in love relationships, he concluded, lowering himself his gaze with a certain sadness upon hearing his own words. After all, he didn't like remembering that part of his past at all. Wait, are you serious? The woman's question surprised the brunette. I mean, you three get along too well. I could tell just by watching you for a few seconds. The Valkyrie commented, clearly referring to Issei's relationship with Penemu and Tiamat. I'm sure you could help me, she exclaimed, clenching her fists tightly with sparkles in her eyes. Hum, I don't know, the brunette commented, not being so sure of the idea. Oh, I get it, the Valkyrie commented, causing a small depressive aura to surround her. Most likely, Tiamat and Penemu don't like the idea. In those moments, the brown-haired man couldn't help but look at her with great confusion. Why would I need their approval? The question answered itself in a matter of seconds, causing the chestnut's expression to change radically. Wow wow wow, Issei quickly waved his hands, making Rossweiss's silent cries disappear. These two deserve someone so much better. Obviously we're not a couple, and I'm not having one either. Sweat began to run down the brunette's face. What's more? I don't even think about falling in love. After the chestnut's words, Rossweiss's depressive aura began to transform into one full of energy and happiness, until she finally hugged him tightly. Does that mean you'll help me? The Valkyrie asked, unable to avoid rubbing her cheek with the chestnuts. If you insist so much, the brown-haired commented with blank eyes, seeing the notoriously childish attitude of the Valkyrie when talking about couples. It is a promise. She exclaimed with great joy, separating by a small jump. Then we'll have fun tomorrow night. She concluded her, outlining a rather precious smile, making the brown-haired man rub his hair at such dazzling energy. Okay. Finally, Issei smiled at her. I hope I can be of help, Valkyrie. You can call me Rossweiss, or just Ross. The Valkyrie commented, already with a much more normal attitude. Entendido, R.O., stop making so much noise. Issei and Rossweiss watched as Penemu opened the door, clearly annoyed by the big energetic chat they were having right in front of her bedroom door. Instead of apologizing, Ross took in the cadre's pajamas, specifically the low neckline that stood out above it because of her enormous breasts. In addition to the fact that his hair, now loose and wet, gave him a rather erotic look. Hey Penemu, the Valkyrie exclaimed, holding up an incriminating finger. You can't walk around opening doors like that without a bra, especially knowing there's a man on the other side who isn't your husband. Issei, who was trying to calm Penemu down, could only look at Rossweiss, just at the same time that the cadre turned her gaze towards the Valkyrie. Penemu quickly opted for a bored look, and looked at her like that for a few seconds. Rossweiss couldn't help but feel slightly uncomfortable, so she began to look between Penemu and Issei. That, the Valkyrie finally broke the silence, only to roll her eyes when Penemu slammed the door loudly, locking the door shut. The two stared at the door in silence for a few seconds, until Rossweiss finally spoke. I'll go see how Tiamat is. Bien. They both parted without saying many words, Issei went to the next door, while Rossweiss went up the stairs. By the way, 
You said earlier that you didn't plan on falling in love, Ross's words made Issei stop. Unfortunately, we can't control what our hearts feel. Those were his last words, leaving Issei doubtful for several seconds. The brown-haired man entered and closed the door, taking several steps forward, before falling exhausted into the double bed. How can my body be so tense? She wondered, then sat down at the foot of the bed. Oh, that's right, I've been holding my katana for more than five hours without lifting a finger, she concluded, looking at his weapon, which was leaning in a corner. Issei quickly took off his clothes, remaining only in his underwear. Just before going to bed, the brown-haired man couldn't help but raise an eyebrow when he saw the bathroom door. Now that I think about it, why is there a noise from a hairdryer since I arrived? She wondered, only to do a shaved turn with the sheets to cover herself when he saw the door open. The noise of the dryer intensified, and the light blue hair swaying with great freedom gave a completely majestic appearance to the dragon, who was wearing black underwear. The color was something new, since she used to always wear white. Tiamat, he asked the brunette with blank eyes. What are you doing in my room? Since we always sleep together, I don't see the problem, the dragon replied, turning off the dryer and setting it aside. Can you fix my hair? The dragon planted the question, only to see how the brunette got up quickly and sat at the foot of the bed. How do I have to do it? The brunette asked, obviously having no idea how he should treat such long hair. The dragon positioned a large comb in her hand. Just do it with care and love. She answered, making Issei blush as the woman sat on her lap. Make sure he doesn't throw me. She finished, delicately moving her hands back so that the brunette had a better view of her hair. Issei listened to the dragon's obeisances, treating her hair with great care. Tiamat closed her eyes with a very slight blush while he felt how the chestnut's hands worked his slightly damp hair with great affection. What is this smell? Is it her hair? She thought the brunette, tilting her head forward involuntarily. Smells great. The brunette opened his eyes again, seeing the bare skin of the dragon. Issei placed a hand on Tiamat's bare shoulder, causing the woman to spasm a little at the sudden contact. She smells so good, she has beautiful smooth skin, her figure is superior to that of a damn goddess, she thought to herself, unable to help but close her eyes empathetically. And, even so, her fiancé played with her just to have the power of hers on her side. The dragon opened her eyes with a small blush when Issei placed his chin on her shoulder. You're done, she asked herself, trying to hide the fact that she was blushing. Yes, she answered with a certain sadness, something that caught the attention of the dragon. You really don't want, the brunette's question made Tiamat raise an eyebrow. Carer K, we already talked about it before, the brown-haired commented. You are one of the most beautiful women I have ever met. You should give some man a chance. Tiamat only frowned slightly at what he was hearing. I understand that what your ex-fiancé did was a lot for you, Issei couldn't help but look down at her with great sadness. But are you sure you're left with no one because of him? She asked, straightening up again and resuming the arrangement of her hair. Issei, I already told you that I would never fall in love again. She answered the dragon, with clear intentions of ending the conversation. Unfortunately, we can't control what our hearts feel, Issei repeated Rossweiss's words, causing Tiamat to tense up for a second. That is true, Tiamat commented after a second of silence. But I don't want to do it, because I'm afraid they'll reject me. Very afraid, he concluded, unable to avoid a small smile. But, you're wrong about one thing. Tiamat couldn't help but blush at what he was about to say. I'm not alone, I have you. Tiamat could feel how the brunette stopped the movement of the comb for a second, and then continued. You're right, you know you can always count on me. She answered the brunette with a smile, making the dragon smile. But that was only for a second, as his face suddenly turned very serious. That's why, if you ever get to have a partner, the dragon's voice sounded low, something that slightly surprised the brunette. HMPH, the chestnut scoffed, I already told you I'm not going to have any. Escuchame, Tiamat's outburst noticeably startled the brunette, being immensely surprised by such a sudden reaction. If you ever get to have a partner, try to talk her into sleeping with me he commented, making the brunette even more surprised. Before, 
He always joked that if you had a girlfriend he couldn't sleep with you anymore. But the truth is that I started to think about it carefully, the brown-haired man could see how the dragon clenched her fists tightly. And I do not want that. Issei could only remain completely stunned by Tiamat's words, until he finally started laughing. Hey, don't tease, she exclaimed the dragon with a small pout, looking at him sideways. Okay, okay, the brown-haired man stopped laughing, unable to avoid continuing to smile. I promise if I ever have a girlfriend, I'll talk her into it. She declared herself, unable to help but blush a little at what he was about to say. To be honest, I wouldn't do it just for you. After all, I think it would hurt me too not to be able to sleep next to you, he concluded, causing a slight blush to appear on Tiamat's face. Besides, you wouldn't have fun sneaking into my room anymore when my parents are home. He finished, unable to help but do it with a subjective tone. You're right, she answered the dragon between small laughs. By the way, what did you mean when you said you were afraid? The brown-haired question made the dragon lower her head for a short second, then raise it again. I know perfectly well that I have a body to die for, I'm not stupid, she commented, unable to avoid drawing a bitter smile on her face. But, I am afraid that they will not love me, that they will use me again, or that they will reject me. Tiamat couldn't help but give a small sigh, looking up at the ceiling. After all, everyone I've been with ends up saying that I'm a deranged madwoman. Tiamat couldn't help but bite her lower lip. Who would fall in love with a crazy woman? They're right, you're a little crazy, the brunette commented, causing the dragon's vision to darken with clear sadness. But that's a part of you, and it's adorable. Tiamat's lips twisted in wonder. Like your sympathy, your tastes, your attitude, Issei had a small flashback of that first time when he felt completely surrendered to her. She only needed to do one thing to achieve it. And above all, your smile. Upon hearing those words, Tiamat couldn't help but put both hands on her breasts, because her heart pounded wildly. Every part of you is adorable, the problem is they didn't take the time to figure it out. She finished the chestnut with great confidence, flashing a smile that Tiamat could never forget. The brunette's smile fell completely when the dragon turned her face. She had glassy eyes, and a huge blush on her face that gave her a divine appearance. A face so beautiful and beautiful that Issei would be unable to forget. Do you really, do you really think that of me? Tiamat's question was heard in a low voice, trying to hide the fact that his voice was about to break. Somehow, Issei snapped out of his stupor and gave her a thumbs up, giving her a toothy grin. Of course, he exclaimed with full confidence and security, only to be surprised when the dragon hugged him with enormous force, throwing him to the bed. Poor Favor. Tiamat snuggled into Issei as much as possible. Poor Favor. The dragon's voice sounded very shaky, at the same time that her blush increased when she felt how the chestnut's arms surrounded her body with great affection. Quote ellipsis quote. Quote ellipsis quote. Poor Favor. Quote ellipsis quote. Quote ellipsis quote. Never leave me alone. Seeing Tiamat hide her gaze on his chest, Issei knew he was about to cry. And obviously the dragon didn't want to be seen that way. So he only deigned to smile, and then kissed her forehead, making Tiamat's body burn with emotion at such a loving gesture. I promise, she answered, only to increase her smile a little more when the dragon buried her face further into her chest for the answer. Issei, both the chestnut and the dragon came out of their little fantasy imposed because of the voice of a certain Valkyrie. Who was still outside, I can enter. The question made the brunette roll his eyes. I'm screwed was the only thing he could think of, just before dragging Tiamat under the sheets, to the surprise of the dragon. Right now I'm a bit busy, he replied with a smile, settling back on the bed. What a fucking excuse, he inwardly cursed himself, causing a hesitant smile to appear on his face. Hum, okay, he commented from the other side, respecting the brunette's privacy. I just wanted to ask if you know where Tiamat is. Her question made the dragon poke her face out from under the sheets, being covered again by Issei. She wasn't in her room. Oh yeah, she exclaimed with a nervous smile. We forgot to tell you that she loves to take a walk in at night. She concluded. Hum, well, the Valkyrie answered with some doubts, but decided to take the brunette's word for it, leaving. He's saved, Issei thought internally, unable to help but give a hiss. Why didn't you tell him the truth? 
Tiamat again showed his face from under the sheets, while he settled on the chestnut chest to sleep. When you get to know her a little better, you'll understand perfectly, believe me. Okay, but now that he's gone, Tiamat couldn't help but hug him tightly. Don't you want to play a little? He asked, causing the brunette to give him a mischievous look. So, that's why you wanted to go to bed so early, huh? She asked herself, causing a small blush of embarrassment to appear on the dragon's face. Okay, but there will be new rules. Hearing this, Tiamat couldn't help but look at him with great interest. Tickling your feet isn't worth it. And most importantly, Issei's gaze darkened greatly. You can't suffocate me with your breasts anymore. Puro, that's cheating. Issei interrupted Tiamat, causing the dragon to give a big snort. You take the fun out of life, he stammered under his breath, sounding very adorable. Very good, he replied at the end, unable to help but crack a somewhat mischievous smile. Anyway, I'll beat you. A large defiant countenance adorned the chestnut figure. That remains to be seen, he replied, only for both of them to start laughing, getting under the covers and making a small ruckus. One hour later, finally she fell asleep, Issei thought with slight grace as he caressed Tiamat's hair, who was sleeping peacefully on his chest. Just when he was about to fall asleep too, he could feel some strange movements under the sheets, something that slightly alerted him. His face flushed almost instantly when he could make out how the hot and shapely body of a woman passed over his figure. Finally, the woman showed her face between the sheets, seeing that it was the cadre. Penemu, she questioned the stick-faced chestnut. How did you get in without making any kind of noise? And most importantly, why are you here? The chestnut's questions made Penemu give a small yawn as she carefully leaned back on the other half of the chestnut that wasn't being used by Tiamat. I could not sleep. It was the simple answer of Penemu, who just closed her eyes and settled even more on Issei's body, causing him to blush slightly. This place gives me the creeps. I hope you don't mind if I sleep with you for this week. No, I understand, the brunette answered with a nervous smile. Um, Penemu purred as she snuggled closer and closer, until she finally smiled. Good night. A few seconds passed, and the brunette had both his hands raised in the air not knowing what to do in this situation. Even though I said that, she thought with a small blush. It's the first time I've slept with only my underwear next to Penemu, and it's slightly uncomfortable. The brown-haired man couldn't help but look at the cadre's huge bust for a short second, seeing that it was pressing hard against his chest. Damn, her temperature is extremely cold and comforting, he thought, squeezing his eyes shut. Are all fallen angels like this? He questioned himself making a small movement to the right, getting Tiamat off of him a bit, since both women were practically on top of him. But I don't dislike it, he thought with a small smile. In fact, it's very comfortable, she concluded, feeling how Tiamat hugged her from behind in her drowsy state. It was pretty cute to see that she wanted to stay as close to him as possible, even when she was asleep. A few hours later, it was the middle of the night, and the three of them were sleeping peacefully. Issei having found a way to look to the side without either of the two women waking up. In fact, the three of them could be said to be quite heavy sleepers. Although everything seemed quite normal, it could be seen how the chestnut was making small faces, while moving his arms under the sheets towards the front. Penemu's face began to flush slightly, while her breathing became more erratic. Finally, the cadre opened her eyes, where she was clearly confused and overwhelmed by a feeling of ecstasy that shouldn't be there since she wasn't having any dirty dreams. What is this feeling? The cadre wondered internally, to then widen her eyes as much as she could. What is it? She couldn't finish the thoughts of her, as she had. To hold back a sudden moan. Under the covers, you could see how Issei had both his hands together, and was doing some kind of repetition, as if he had a weapon. The problem is that she was rubbing her hands with great force on the cadre's breasts. Penemu did her best to resist the stimulations to find out what the hell was going on. Issei, the woman managed to whisper softly, only to bite her index finger as she felt a great surge of pleasure. Why does she feel so good? She couldn't help but scream inwardly, genuinely surprised at her body's reaction. The brown-haired man only murmured a couple of things, from which only, Katana, could be heard, and that was enough information for Penemu. He's asleep, the cadre thought slightly narrowing her eyes as she bit her finger even harder, 
at the same time that her blush reached the highest level. I just have to flip it. Penemu took him gently by the shoulders so he wouldn't wake up. Even so, the brunette kept going through the motions, so it wasn't over. I just have to flip it. She began to rub her thighs against her will. Solo. Tengo. Penemu opened her mouth in a lascivious way, causing a great gasp covered in pleasure to be heard throughout the room. Solo. Just as the cadre reasserted her grip on the chestnut's elbows, she stared into his face. Solo. He was sleeping like an angel, while a tiny smile was on his face. Penemu. The brunette murmured, making the cadre's eyes widen as they grew more and more glassy. I just need it right now. Penemu unbuttoned her white pajamas with a sharp yank with her hands, making her breasts fully exposed. They rebounded with great energy upon being released, unleashing their full size, being utterly majestic. Her peculiar inverted nipples and her sweaty body made for a more than appetizing sight. She quickly took the brunette's hands and brought them to her breasts, giving a great sigh full of pleasure. She snuggled even closer to Issei and whispered in his ear. Enough of the repetitions. Penemu's lips moved seductively. Now, I want you to move your arms in circles, giving light squeezes at times. Like a robot, Issei quickly complied with the order, his hands beginning to slide across the cadre's smooth, creamy skin. His breasts were so gigantic and padded, that the brown haired's two hands sank almost completely into them. Penemu covered her mouth with one hand while the brunette continued to deal with her great weak point. It's like, she's setting me on fire, she thought, as her eyes filled with pleasure. Oh god, he's so good, Penemu's hips began to press hard against the chestnut's crotch, making very suggestive pelvic movements. Her hands of hers feel too good, she squeezed her eyes shut, pressing her socket into his waist as hard as possible. My whole body feels too good, she moaned internally, as she felt an orgasm hit her with great force. She slightly separated her waist from the chestnuts, seeing how her black panties were completely wet, where some threads made of somewhat thick liquid connected her waist with Issei's. She opened her eyes, and the first thing she saw was the brunette's face, slightly agitated by everything that was happening. Her eyes widened slightly as she felt Issei's small erection hit her just below her entrance. Now, I can't take it anymore. La Cadre approached the chestnut's ear, while pressing her naked body tightly against his. He drives me crazy just touching me a little. Penemu's breathing became even more agitated as she wrapped her legs around his legs. I've been ignoring it until now, but I can't anymore, I'm a fallen angel. Penemu's hand slowly moved to Issei's cheeks, giving him a rather gentle and loving caress. Especially, when my body is brushing against that of the person I, quote ellipsis quote, Penemu's hips began to move slowly on the chestnut's erection, causing a very pleasant touch. Quote ellipsis quote, that I love so much. Penemu's hips began to move even faster, causing Issei to make small gestures. Te, Amo, this time it was not a thought. Te Amo, she was whispering it in his ear. Te Amo, the movement of the hips intensified a little more, making some quite lewd sounds begin to be heard. Te Amo, she couldn't help but say it more forcefully, as her eyes began to fill with tears. Te Amo, Te Amo, she tightly closed her eyes, letting all that crying that was contained flow out. I want to be your woman. I want you to kiss me until I'm breathless. I wished it so much. Those were the last sincere words that came out of her lips, before nestling her face into Issei's neck as she continued to cry. Her hip movement had stopped, and she could see how the sheets were stained even more than a few seconds ago. An hour before dawn, why am I dreaming this? The chestnut wondered, being in bed next to the fall. Penemu was holding his cheeks with great affection, while her warm and sweaty body pressed hard against his. Penemu's pelvic movements rubbed hard against his erection, causing Issei to grit his teeth. Why does everything feel so real? He thought to her feeling how his entire body felt extremely hot from the contact he was having with Penemu. The brown's eyes couldn't help but widen slightly when he saw how tears shot from the cadre's face. Is crying, she couldn't help but wonder, since she couldn't quite see her face. It was probably because she was very close to her and it was a dream. Te Amo, the brown-haired man couldn't help but feel a great chill when those words left his lips, accompanied by a voice that was covered in tears. It sounded like she was venting. 
Right at that moment, Issei's eyes widened. She quickly relaxed knowing that she had woken up. Although that calm expression did not last more than a second. Why is everything so wet? That was the first thing he thought when he felt the dampness of the sheets, only to start turning purple when he finally realized it. In front of him, Penemu was asleep with a completely flushed face, as she breathed heavily. Her sheets had been pulled back, so her breasts were fully exposed. And there were both of her hands, clinging tightly to the two huge mounds. Issei jumped off the bed, falling to his knees on the floor, making both women wake up from the huge noise. I'm sorry, she screamed, hitting her forehead hard against the ground, generating a slight tremor. Tiamat quickly turned around, and saw the condition that her friend was in. Penemu sat up and crawled across the bed, not caring that her breasts were still exposed. Wait, Issei, the woman exclaimed with slight terror on her face for what she herself had done. I, the woman stopped when Issei lifted her head from her, as her small boner could be seen, though her underwear was nowhere to be seen underneath. The two women blushed fiercely, so Issei looked down at his crotch and quickly covered himself with both of his hands. I'm sorry, she screamed again, running straight for the bathroom. Issei closed the door tightly, causing a rather awkward silence to appear between the two women, looking intently towards the bathroom. When the shower water began to run, they both finally looked at each other. I think you have a lot to explain to me, Tiamat commented, unable to help but draw a mischievous smile on her face. I, Penemu quickly covered her breasts with her pajamas, while her eyes began to tremble. He touched me while I was asleep, and I couldn't control myself, she said under her breath, as tears began to fall from her face. I I took advantage of him, Tiamat couldn't help but sigh as he saw how the cadre began to cry. Relax, Tiamat commented, approaching her and giving her a small hug. Without a doubt, the dragon's gesture surprised Penemu. It's in your nature, and it's hard to fight against it. He declared gently, making it clear that he supported her. I know how she feels, believe me. I was about to do something once too. Penemu hugged her back, stopping her tears when she was comforted. How did you manage to bear it? The cadre asked, resting her chin on the dragon's shoulder to relax. The first thing you should do is not ignore your growing libido. If you do, I think you already checked what will happen, he commented, unable to help but smirk at what he had witnessed. When I get very aroused in my body, I usually have to pleasure myself until my body relaxes. It takes me a whole night with that, and sometimes longer. Are you saying that I have to stay awake all day to get rid of all that burning that my body feels? She asked herself in great astonishment, since she had never needed so much time before. Well, I'm in mating season and in my case it's much more complicated to stay sane in compromising situations. Maybe you don't need that much time, she commented, separating from Penemu. Maybe if I need it, Penemu declared, lowering her face slightly with some embarrassment. I've noticed that my libido has increased a lot since I've been with Issei. The cadre couldn't help but hug herself. I think the fact that I'm always so close to him, and not being able to do anything, that's what's driving me crazy. You've never thought about having sex. But now that you love someone so much, things start to change. Especially if you're a pretty special fall, like you. He concluded, unable to avoid making a little amused snort at seeing how Penemu blushed with embarrassment at her words. Then, I won't ignore that burning and empty feeling anymore, the cadre replied, as she touched her lower abdomen with a small blush. After all, that's where she felt that great emptiness, and she knew the reason why. Having resolved this matter, Tiamat sat down in front of her, looking at her with great attention. How did you feel when you were touched by him? He asked with great interest. Hum, I I don't know how to explain it, he commented with a slight stutter. I just felt like my whole body was on fire, but I wasn't burning. It was a warm feeling that embraced my whole body, she tried to explain, then touched her chest, pressing hard. Especially here, she commented with a deep blush. Being able to feel his body through mine, made me feel like I was in a dream, and, the de la Cadre's blush deepened. I couldn't contain myself. As I let myself be absolved by all the passion and pleasure, I started to whisper a thing or two to her. And what were they? The dragon asked. Her legs were moving, indicating that she was very amused by the story. 
Penemu couldn't help but look down with a big blush on her face. Quote ellipsis quote, do I really have to tell you? Meanwhile, the chestnut was in the bathroom, just out of the shower. He was looking at the little friend of his, who was just as steadfast as he had been for much of the night. I even took a cold shower to relax, she thought, only to frown as memories of him touching Penemu's breasts came back to her. But I still feel like I'm touching them, Issei couldn't help but let out a big, frustrated sigh. I can't go out like this, she exclaimed, rubbing her hair in great frustration. Asterisk just take care of it. Diedrag's voice came through his hand, causing Issei to cover his crotch with a deep blush. D Diedra Diedrag, were you looking at me? The brunette exclaimed with blank eyes. Asterisk please, I've been living, with you since you were born. The dragon exclaimed, do you think this is the first time I've seen a boner of yours? Hum, you're quite right, the brown haired man thought aloud, removing his hands, to then look at his rebellious member again. But if I do that, I'd be breaking my promise, he declared with great seriousness. Asterisk you mean the promise you made before you died? Diedrag asked, unable to help but sneer with a small snort. Asterisk listen to me, brat. It's one thing to be a complete idiot pervert and severely mentally challenged, than to be someone who simply got a boner because he got turned on by something completely understandable. The dragon explained, then turned serious. Asterisk it's a completely natural reaction, Issei. In fact, I was already getting worried seeing that your body barely reacted every day you slept with Tiamat. Asterisk, Issei simply rubbed his hair, remembering all the times he was in a situation a little compromised with Tiamat and Penemu. Actually, I already knew, Issei couldn't help but sigh. It's just, every time I think of them that way, Issei couldn't help but look down sadly. I can't help but feel bad. Issei rubbed the back of his neck, unable to help but sigh. Do you think seeing only them as attractive women has anything to do with it? Asterisk surely. Asterisk. Diedre decided to answer the question, but not completely settle the doubt. If I tell him the reason why he only finds the two of them attractive, surely he won't believe me. I just hope he stops deceiving himself, because he's suffering, the dragon finished his thoughts, unable to help but worry about the chestnut. Although, to tell the truth, I don't think I'll stop suffering when I accept that he's in love with them. Diedrag couldn't help but close his eyes when he saw that the brown-haired man took his member to begin with. At that point, if I'll try to help him, maybe I can convince him to make a move, and if he doesn't listen to me in time, I'll just break my promise and tell him that Tiamat is in love with him. In the room, Penemu was arranging all the wet sheets. Help me change this, before Rossweiss shows up. She commented the cadre, causing Tiamat to raise an eyebrow. Because, she asked her with a slightly teasing tone, are you ashamed that I see how much you came? Penemu gave him a sharp look at what she heard. No, it was the simple response of the cadre, to later continue ordering. When you get to know her a little better, you'll understand perfectly, believe me. Tiamat couldn't help but have a little deja vu in those moments. Several minutes later, the brown-haired man came out with only a towel around his waist, being slightly surprised when he saw everything much cleaner. On the bed, both women were sitting on the edge of the bed, talking quietly. Tiamat and Penemu stopped chatting when they saw the chestnut finally come out. Issei couldn't help but drop eye contact with Penemu. He approached slowly as he rubbed his arm, then kneeled in front of the woman and bowed low. Sorry, Issei couldn't help but feel like an idiot as the apology sounded super lame. The chestnut's eyes widened in surprise when he felt how two beautiful and soft hands took his cheek. Issei couldn't help but blush when Penemu hugged him very affectionately, putting her face right in the middle of her huge cleavage. Don't worry, it was an accident, Penemu's sweet and loving voice made the brown-haired man completely relax, closing his eyes to better listen to his heartbeat. Instead of ending the hug, the cadre rested her chin on the brunette's forehead, closing her eyes and enjoying the moment. Tiamat could only widen her smile with great tenderness, seeing the beautiful moment between them. Unfortunately, that cute moment wouldn't last. More than five seconds. Issei, it's about time. Rosswai stopped instantly upon seeing the situation. There was Issei, only with a towel covering him. Penemu in quite revealing pajamas, in her eyes, hugging the chestnut. And Tiamat only with an underwear. 
Rossweiss's gaze slowly changed from incredulous to furious. Can you explain to me what is happening? She asked with a frown, while a slight blush appears on her face at the thought of what they were doing all night. Penemu and Issei just looked at each other with innocent looks, then looked back at Rossweiss. Meanwhile, Tiamat merely bowed her shoulders. Sleep, the dragon replied. Now I can understand a little more why he wants my help, the brown-haired man thought, while he looked carefully into the bathroom. He was sitting on the edge of the bed, watching how several shadows took turns under the door, something that looked extremely strange. She's very conservative, too, she commented to the dragon plainly, since he had never seen any woman act the same way in her thousands of years of life. You don't even say it, the brown-haired man thought. Spread your legs wider. I can't see well, Rossweiss commented, making Issei blush. Is he doing what I think he's doing? Issei wondered internally, unable to help but roll his eyes when she heard Tiamat's response. Do you really have to check our hymens? Ye yes quiet, he yelled, embarrassed by Ross, making the brunette cover his ears. It's the fastest way to confirm that they're telling me the truth. You do know that we could still be a virgin without having our hymen, right? Penemu's voice was easily heard. WHYI said that this is the easy way to check. The Valkyrie exclaimed, unable to help but stutter again. After a few seconds of silence, Issei couldn't help but cringe at the great feeling of discomfort that this situation was giving him. After all, she couldn't help but imagine Tiamat sitting on the stool with her legs spread open while she was thoroughly inspected by Rossweiss. Shit, Issei couldn't help but curse himself internally at the same time that he had a great chill for imagining those things. Yes, it's there, Rossweiss's slightly surprised comment was followed by another sound, indicating that Tiamat had risen to her feet. You see, the dragon's voice echoed inside the bathroom. We told you, the noise of putting on clothes could be heard, indicating that the three of them were preparing to go out. Okay, sorry, Rossweiss exclaimed with a slightly annoyed tone. I should have believed them. That's not the main problem. Penemu opened the door, making Issei already see the three women in their classic training clothes. The problem is that you get too involved in what doesn't concern you. She declared the cadre, narrowing her eyes slightly. You have two strange habits and ideals, she concluded, causing Rossweiss to raise an eyebrow. I'd take your word for it if you two didn't have any of it. She replied, placing both hands on her hip. Are you telling me that sleeping next to him because you feel a little uncomfortable is something normal? She questioned herself, then looked at the dragon, frowning. And let's not even talk about you. That, the dragon asked, raising both eyebrows. I only do what I like. Do not play the fool. This time, both Penemu and Rossweiss spoke, causing Tiamat to look away, as if he hadn't heard anything. Hem, girls, what are we doing today? Issei quickly changed the subject as she didn't want Rossweiss's questioning to take her turn. Today we will vary, Tiamat commented, making everyone look at him. I plan to teach you something important. After that, you will correspond to the training you were doing with Penemu. Regularly, so you can start using your katana. He concluded, then fixed his gaze on Rossweiss. I'll need your help for this, Rossweiss. No problem, the Valkyrie exclaimed with a smile. Now that I think about it, Tiamat hasn't taught me anything on her own since that time, she thought, remembering the old days in that cave, in the familiar kingdom. What memories, she couldn't help but think, drawing a somewhat nostalgic smile. It's only been a little over four months, but it feels like a year ago. Okay, let's go, she stated the dragon, giving her a small nod. Chapter 39, The Valkyrie WHO Wished for Love I I'm not too sure about this, Issei couldn't help but rub his hair uneasily. The four of them were in the middle of the enormous mountains that bordered Asgard, where the snow fell and a great cold could be felt in the environment. Not only because of that dense freezing fog, but also because of the fact that we were surrounded by ridges and more snow-covered ridges. What exactly can this do for me? He questioned the brunette, fixing his gaze on Tiamat, who was next to him. I was sure it was the second time I'd seen her in that fleece coat made of completely white bearskin, and it really suited her. Just be quiet and watch, was Tiamat's simple response as he blew on his hands to warm himself, then looked straight ahead, placing his hands in the pockets of his thick fleece coat. Well, 
We can't trust ourselves, because she won't hold back, the Kadri stated as she adjusted the red scarf around her neck. She was wearing a black trench coat that completely covered her body. In fact, it was something of a novelty, since she usually wore her ultra-heavy robe, and the truth is that it suited her quite well too. The Kadri looked straight ahead, only to narrow her eyes as she fixed her gaze on a Tiamat of ice. Okay it's an ice clone and all, but do you think we'll be okay? Rossweiss asked, wearing her classic Valkyrie armor, as she breathed in a great cold air. It was clear that she was used to these kinds of temperatures. It'll just be a warm-up, Penemu declared, taking her hands out of her pockets. I don't like this, the brown-haired man commented under his breath, making the dragon look askance at him. I understand that it is a clone, but you are hundreds of times stronger than them. Don't worry, nothing will happen, Tiamat answered, looking straight ahead. He just watches his movements well. Penemu adjusted the black gloves on her hands, while Rossweiss created a kind of spiked ice gauntlet that completely covered her hands. Both women looked at each other, then nodded. In those moments, it could be seen how the ice clone opened its eyes. Begin, Tiamat exclaimed, at the same time that an icy aura covered his beautiful deep blue eyes. The three of them quickly ran off at the contact. As Penemu and Rossweiss prepared to punch him, the Tiamat clone jumped up and landed a powerful kick to Penemu's chest, then followed her movement into the air and delivered a powerful kick to Rossweiss's cheek. I send her away, Issei only observed this with slight concern, while Tiamat remained with her impassive gaze, her hands still covered by her coat. Penemu tried to punch him hard in the chest, which the clone dodged only by leaning his body slightly to the side, then deflecting another blow from the Kadri with his forearm. The clone ducked quickly to avoid a blow to his face, though he couldn't anticipate when Penemu spun around, using the same momentum from her previous blow as momentum to deliver a strong kick to the head, which seemed to have gone unnoticed, done a lot of damage. Penemu tried to follow up with her attacks, but the clone again deflected her punch with her forearm. The Kadri used this too, her advantage and delivered a quick punch with her other hand, which ended up coming down to the arm that had recently blocked her and it had all been a ploy to grab it with both of her hands. Penemu looked behind her, only to draw an annoyed look when she felt the clone's ice begin to move on her recently fractured arm, returning it completely to normal. Are you swinging? It was the last thing the Kadri could say before she received a forceful punch to the cheek from her that shook her completely, generating a small crater at her feet, at the same time that she spat out a small amount of blood. The clone's ice began to glow, causing it to go into an incredible punching spree, landing numerous quick, short punches to its back, causing loud rumbles to be heard as the Kadri's body thrashed violently, until finally receiving a powerful kick, on her back that sent her rolling through the snow. Don't you think things are getting a little out of hand? The chestnut asked after seeing the last action. What you want to do, is get into the fight. She answered the dragon with a mocking tone. I told you to keep quiet and watch. She concluded herself, making Issei nod. The clone quickly turned around when he sensed a harassing presence, his eyes widening slightly as Rossweiss was on a huge path of ice that he was creating as he slid, and he was moving really fast. The clone managed to do a big leap to the side to dodge Rossweiss's heavy punch, but I couldn't foresee that ice path being generated at all times and circumstances. Ross rushed over as the ice path did a 180 degree turn, landing a sharp blow to the clone's face as the Valkyrie's head was pointed at the ground. It was such a strong and forceful blow that it had released small pieces of ice everywhere. It was unknown if it was from Rossweiss's own gauntlet or from the clone's face. But one thing was sure. That had to hurt. That's quite an interesting skill. Tiamat thought, unable to help but smile. I wonder how far his special powers would go in a real battle. Unfortunately, the Valkyrie's demonstration didn't last much longer as the clone knocked her off her icy path and began to land heavy blows all over her body without her even being able to fight back. Something very similar to what happened to Penemu, if not the same. Finally, the clone did a large cartwheel, delivering a strong downward kick to Rossweiss's face that drove it deep into the ground, creating a small crater. The clone quickly went to Penemu who was already coming to the aid. Rossweiss got up with a bit of difficulty while spitting up some blood, quickly joining the fray as the Kadri wasn't having a great time. Both began to attack in unison, only to be constantly blocked by the clone, 
until one time she blocked both punches with her two forearms, and then waved her arms violently, destabilizing her two opponents. Both would receive the exact same kick from the beginning, causing them to end up a bit apart. The clone quickly fixed on Rosswise seeing that Penemu had been left lying on the ground after her last blow to the face. Just at that moment, Penemu got up from the ground while a small trickle of blood ran from her mouth. Both Rosswise and Penemu fixed their gazes. The first to nod was the Kadri, only to receive the same response from Rosswise. Penemu approached behind the clone carefully, while Rosswise recreated her ice gauntlets and went into a fighting stance again. The clone flexed his fist with the idea of hitting her when he saw Ross remain passive, only to stop dead when someone grabbed her forearm. The clone glanced back quickly, only to be punched hard on the cheek by Penemu. Her face twisted to the other side, receiving a strong punch from Rossweiss with exactly the same forcefulness as Penemu, generating large cracks in the ground. The clone staggered clearly in a daze, only to end up receiving a powerful hook from Penemu that nearly ripped its jaw off due to the ice on its neck having cracked too badly. Finally, both women gave each other one last look, just before Penemu gave him a strong kick to the neck, while Rossweiss punched him hard on his head, making the clone's neck about to snap, in addition to that the rest of his body began to fail noticeably. Incredible, the brown-haired man couldn't help but think with great admiration, since the last combo performed by Rossweiss and Penemu had been very synchronized. Finally, Penemu materialized her katana, causing a large amount of purple lightning to shoot out in various directions as she made a swift move, falling behind the clone while holding her weapon out. The head of the now inert opponent was left hanging, due to the fact that the Kadri had given him a semi-clean cut at the base of his neck. Rossweiss arrived quickly and gave it a strong upward kick, demonstrating her great agility as she sent the clone's head flying, causing the ice body to crumble into a thousand pieces. Issei just smiled sticking his katana into the ground with a quick twist, before beginning to clap. Tiamat only watched them with a small smile. Good job. He declared, nodding slightly. Ross hurried over to Penemu with a smile and his hand outstretched. The Kadri hesitated for a brief second, but finally smiled and high-fived her. You have a lot of potential, Issei. Tiamat's comment made the aforementioned look at him. But there will be certain fights where you have no choice but to fight as a team. She declared the dragon, watching as both women approached the duo with smiles on their faces. And I mean fighting alongside someone who actually has synergy with you, and isn't a bother. Tiamat finally looked up at him, resting a finger on her brunette's nose. Make sure you know what those fights are when the time comes. She concluded her, outlining a beautiful smile. Finally, Penemu would wipe the blood from her lips, but then lick her finger in a somewhat lustful way something that made Rossweiss's hair stand on end. Luckily, Rossweiss realized in time that he was only bothering her. At night, the four of them were having dinner in the main hall of the castle. Everything was covered with plates and bowls with different foods on the huge round table, representing a great banquet. Something a bit strange, since there were very few people for so much food. Girls, after I shower I'll be away for a couple of hours. He commented on the chestnut while he ate calmly, having Penemu and Tiamat next to him, who looked at him with slight surprise after his words. What are you going to do at this hour? The dragon asked with great curiosity. Rossweiss needs help with a couple of things. She answered the brunette while he looked ahead, receiving a grateful look from the Valkyrie, since she had not given the details. If you want, we can help you too. Penemu declared, fixing her gaze on Ross. It's not a bother. Uh, there's really no need. The Valkyries start made both Penemu and Tiamat raise an eyebrow. That is to say, Rossweiss was silent for a short second, while a blush began to spread on his face. Just with his help it will be more than enough. He finished, unable to avoid taking a large amount of juice out of nerves, and then began to cough when he choked. Tiamat and Penemu just looked at each other, blinking a couple of times, and then looking at Issei for answers, who just shrugged. You don't need to be like that, Tiamat commented. We wish them luck, he concluded, making Rossweiss visibly relax. Are you so ashamed to admit it? The chestnut wondered, unable to avoid raising an eyebrow. The idea of Asgard finding out that you are seeking help for your bachelorhood must terrify you. Diedrag explained through his mind. I think the same. 
Issei continued the internal conversation with his tenant, while he ate secretly. But that only makes me believe even more that he's keeping things from us. He commented to her, glancing sideways at the Valkyrie, that she was happily eating. Why would she be afraid of finding out about her? Why hasn't anyone wanted to try to woo her for thousands of years? I thought only I had noticed. The dragon commented with slight surprise, seeing that the chestnut was getting smarter at an increasing speed. Her attitude may be somewhat complicated, but she is still a beautiful woman. And most importantly, she is the future queen of the Valkyries, Issei finished Diedrag's statement. Having such an important title, why hasn't anyone tried to get close to her in so many millennia? The brown wondered, narrowing her eyes slightly. I don't think she's lying to me, but it's more than obvious that something very strange is going on. Let's wait and see how everything unfolds, declared the dragon. In time we will find out. Pipe quote. I agree, Issei stated, ending her internal chat with Diedrake. A few moments later, Issei came out of his room in his typical academy outfit. Issei. The chestnut couldn't help but smile after hearing the voice of the Valkyrie. He closed the bedroom door, and turned to see her with a big toothy smile. Hello. The chestnut's smile slowly faded to a look of astonishment when he saw the Valkyrie with that typical animated smile of hers, although today there was something very different. Rossweiss. Issei finished his greeting with much less energy, since the Valkyrie was wearing a beautiful purple one-piece dress that revealed some cleavage, a slightly transparent fabric of the same color fell from the mini skirt of her dress to her feet having a cut on one side so that she can move more freely. Seeing Issei's expression, Rossweiss couldn't help but get flustered. I knew, she looked at herself with some sadness. These kinds of dresses don't suit me, do they? No, is not that. The brown-haired man answered quickly, unable to avoid cursing himself as he was completely stunned. It's the first time I've seen you without your armor, and it took me a bit by surprise. He explained the brunette, then raised his thumb with a toothy grin. The dress and makeup look beautiful on you, he concluded, bringing a big smile to Rossweiss's face. Are you serious? She asked with a beautiful smile, as she clasped her two hands above her cleavage. That wouldn't have been enough to impress Issei, but the thin blush that spread across her face made her figure look majestic. Issei couldn't help but feel slightly nervous at the Valkyrie's beautiful expression. Completely, she answered. So if we fake some kind of date, Ross commented, beginning to get visibly nervous. Should we go to a restaurant? Go to the movies? She asked herself as her smile faltered more and more. Well, I heard that they did now. Hum, Issei couldn't help but rub his hair doubtfully, making Ross flinch. Don't you think dating should be more fun? She asked herself, causing the Valkyrie's figure to turn to stone. I'm not saying you're boring. The brunette exclaimed quickly after seeing Ross's reaction. I just think that, as a couple, maybe it would be better to go to more crowded and fun places. She finished, causing Rossweiss to flinch. I understand, she exclaimed, slamming her fist into her hand. So, the Valkyrie began to sweat severely, causing a nervous bead of sweat to roll down. The brunette's head, wh what place can be something fun nowadays? She asked herself with a slight stutter. AA bar, AA casino, Ross's face exploded with embarrassment as she thought of his latest proposal. Ooh AA ho ho hotel, she proposed with a big blush on his face. Why not a fair, he asked the brunette with his arms crossed, while he raised an eyebrow. A fair, she wondered aloud with a slight stupor, before outlining a big smile. Yes, a fair, then, it's already decided. He declared the brunette with a friendly smile on her face. Wait, Rossweiss stopped him with a dramatic pose, making the brunette raise an eyebrow. Are you sure you're going with those clothes? He asked, making the brunette look at himself. Hmm, the truth is that I got used to wearing this, he commented, rubbing his hair nervously. Shit, I forgot this was supposed to be a date. She thought internally, hitting herself hard in the face. Who the fuck wears academy clothes on a date? Immediately after asking that question, Issei couldn't help but draw a bitter smile when she remembered that her date with Rainer had been in those same clothes. I'm a mess. Well, the Valkyrie commented, brushing it off. As long as it doesn't bother you, I don't see a problem with it. She concluded herself, then created a magic circle at her feet. 
I think there was a big fair in America. We could go check it out. Issei just walked into the magic circle, deciding not to ask her how she knew about it. Just as the two disappeared, Henemu's door opened a crack, where her dear dragon friend was accompanying her. Should we go check on them? Tiamat asked. I think Ross is a good woman, but we shouldn't trust each other. I agree, Henemu replied, but, I have to say that I find it incredible that she asked him for help for that. The Kadri commented with a small smile. We are two now, the dragon affirmed, with exactly the same expression as Penemu. Somewhere in New York, Wu, Issei couldn't help but widen his eyes with a great shine in them due to what she was witnessing. In front of him, a huge number of shops and games were in place, including a perfectly lit gigantic ferris wheel that seemed to touch the sky. It's not the same as watching it on TV, the brunette declared, giving a big whistle. And he was not only referring to the attractions, but also to the large number of crowds that were on the site. Hey, Rossweiss, the chestnut would comment, looking from one place to the other. Where would you like to start? After a few seconds without receiving an answer, he thought that Rossweiss was lost. But just before he turned around, she could hear the voice of the Valkyrie right behind him. I, Issei looked over his shoulders, seeing the woman's completely tense expression. I, Rossweiss closed her eyes deeply, making her fists shake. What place can be entertaining? Could you have fun being with me? Rossweiss didn't realize her thoughts were coming to light, making Issei feel a little bad for her. In addition to being conservative, she also has severe problems with her self-esteem, the brown-haired man would think, and then he smiled when an idea occurred to him. I think the Ferris wheel would be nice. The Valkyrie exclaimed very excited, causing Issei to turn around. You don't need to think about it so much. The brunette's response visibly puzzled Rossweiss. This place is fun no matter where you go. Don't think anything. Don't plan anything. That's not necessary. A couple of fireworks exploded in the skies just at the same time that the brunette extended her two hands, emphasizing the entire sight. Just let yourself be carried away by the place, enjoy it and be yourself. The chestnut exclaimed with a big toothy. Smile being illuminated by the light produced by the gunpowder. That way you can have fun. But, Rossweiss couldn't help but bow her head in doubt. If I don't think about anything, then it's more likely that things will turn out badly, the Valkyrie clutched her dress tightly. Even when I try, no one has gone out with me a second time. That's why I have to give 200%. In these moments, the brunette finally got fed up and rolled his eyes at her, then firmly took the Valkyrie's hand. She looked up in great confusion. Stop torturing yourself and let's have some fun. The brunette exclaimed, quickly dragging her inside. Rossweiss couldn't help but give a small cry of surprise. But that cry was completely overshadowed by her look moved by her when she saw the big smile that the brunette gave her as she guided her towards the nearest attractions. Neither of them knew it, but tonight was going to be very pleasant. The first thing they did was enter a store that contained a large number of costumes, or rather parts of them. Issei quickly entered the store, dragging a nervous Rossweiss who didn't know how to act right now. Issei put his hands in one of the many trunks, starting to throw a lot of clothes outside. Ross couldn't help but roll his eyes when a large amount of clothing began to fall on her, until she was completely covered. The Valkyrie flailed frantically to remove her garments, then grabbed a pair of rabbit ears that had caught her eye, putting them on out of curiosity. Her gaze quickly searched for Issei, who had his back turned. The brunette turned around, seeing that he was wearing a pair of extremely exaggerated glasses with a very ridiculous mustache. Rossweiss simply couldn't resist, so she tried to cover her mouth, but the small laugh shot out of her mouth. That made Issei smile, although that happiness didn't last long. What are you doing, brat? An old bald man interrupted them with clear annoyance, and clearly had the airs of being the owner of the shop. And you, an old woman, aren't you ashamed to make this mess? The old man asked, I'd better order this now, or, let's go. Issei took her by the hand again, causing Rossweiss to be surprised again by such a sudden contact. The brown-haired man threw a bunch of bills on the ground before disappearing. That, the old man yelled with clear anger as they both shot out of the store. Both were playing various games in the nearby stores. Surprisingly, Rossweiss was ridiculously good at everything, especially hitting targets with toy rifles. 
The only one she couldn't get past, was a game of hitting the moles, where Issei claimed and reaffirmed that the game was rigged, obviously without telling the manager to his face. After all, he had seen quite a few interesting rewards that he could get. I swear I'll beat that old man, the brown-haired man commented with great frustration as he went to the ferris wheel together with Rossweiss. It doesn't matter that it takes me a lifetime to do it. Come on, don't think about that anymore, Rossweiss exclaimed, turning a little to face the brunette. Issei couldn't help but be surprised, since Ross's attitude had changed throughout these two hours. And not only that, now she was wearing those rabbit ears and that little stuffed snake that she used as a scarf, in addition to the huge bag that was full of little stuffed animals. Let's go to the ferris wheel, we don't have time anymore. The Valkyrie exclaimed with a big smile, taking the brunette by her hand. He was obviously very surprised when she took the initiative for the first time. Issei continued to be dragged by her, unable to help but stare into her face. That tense, serious and sometimes moody face had changed radically. Now, that smile made it clear, how much fun he was having. Issei could only smile seeing her like that. After all, he had finally gotten her to let go. Now she was really having fun. It was very nice to see how his face changed to a much happier and more liberated one for each game he went through, a completely covered woman commented as she watched the couple from afar. Her tone of voice made it clear that she was Penemu. I guess we worry about nothing. The other light blue haired woman declared, adjusting her glasses. She's just having fun. She concluded her, outlining a small smile. Here we are, Rossweiss commented, looking at the gigantic ferris wheel with a beautiful smile, while she paid the attendant. She dragged Issei inside the ferris wheel, which started spinning in a heartbeat. The brown haired simply watched as Rossweiss swayed from side to side while humming a song watching as the ferris wheel slowly ascended and allowed the entire fair to be seen. Seeing her like that, Issei couldn't help but lean back in the seat and start laughing. This clearly caused the Valkyrie to look at him with a raised eyebrow. What is so funny? He asked, thinking he was laughing at her, however, her assumption wasn't entirely wrong. At first you acted like an insecure and scared girl, but now you're someone completely different. She commented, making Rossweiss blush in embarrassment at her words. Now I could tell that you are quite adorable, she concluded, making the Valkyrie's blush intensify, although this time it wasn't out of embarrassment, but because of her nice words. Oh look, Ross exclaimed, sticking his head out of the seat, something that made the brunette nervous. We are already at the top, he concluded with great joy. Rossweiss, don't stick your head out of the Issei couldn't finish his scolding as they both looked surprised as a large amount of fireworks began to light up the sky. It's lovely, she declared the Valkyrie, leaving out the fact that Issei had also stuck her head out of the ferris wheel, when he was scolding her for it earlier. Yes, it's been a long time since I've seen so many fireworks, the brown haired man commented, remembering that time he traveled in an ice swan together with Penemu. Damn, what good memories, he thought to himself unable to help but break into a big smile as he looked at the big flashes. After spending several seconds watching the big party in silence, Rossweiss began to speak. Issei, thank you, the brown-haired man couldn't help but look at her with some curiosity about her words. I think I've learned some important things today, he explained to her, finally looking away from the fireworks, giving her a soft, but very cute smile. And on top of that, I had a lot of fun. Issei just smiled at her, nodding. Rossweiss increased her smile a little more, at the same time that she took her stuffed scarf with both hands. She couldn't help but blush at what she was going to say. I hope next night is just as fun, 